So back at it again, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> so you uh you was busy. I was I was busy. You yeah. had two trucks, you said. Yeah, two trucks. And I thought they were gonna you know bring them up here, drop them off, and fly back, and then fly back when they were done. And nope, oh, they dropped them off that Monday morning and said, Yeah, we just got a motel down the road. <laughs> you had to get your trucks done this week. <laughs> uh, so I think we build them out at 33 hours each. Mm -hmm. So that's 66 hours, and I've got the customer sitting in a motel. I, w I was here pretty late each night. <laughs> yeah, you, you were, uh, what, 12, 30, 1 o'clock one night? Two. Two. Oh. Two nights. Yeah. 10, 30, another two nights, just just trying to make sure. You know, plus, I got my normal stuff I got to take care of, too. Yeah. So it was, you know, cab off, everything, just to, to go through this this bulletproof program so everybody out there has their their own opinion or idea on what a bulletproofing program is gonna be now we weren't building massive amounts of power out of these two trucks cuz you know yes they'd gone through the weight loss program and they got the attitude change um, they have the potential to get turned up but these these two guys were in their 60s right so we're not even gonna talk about building a whole lot of power i think they had them on like level two which is maybe a hundred horse but what they do want is these trucks to last for a long time so we had to ixnay all of the stuff that potentially breaks and everybody out there who has a fifth gen knows that that cam and lifter is that cam and lifter combination is the weakest link so we reached out to our buddies over at hamilton cams and we got two camshafts and lifter combinations. So you got the camshafts, lifters, push rods, and rocker arms. And it was some of the best equipment for the application that we were doing that I've seen. Those those push rods were amazing. They were extra thick, hardened on the entire thing, not just on the ends. Oh, nice. And then the, the rocker arm combinations, they weren't factory Mopar. It's a Hamilton... A Hamilton combination that they're having made for them plus their special grind camshafts so you know we got started now go back and answer some of the questions on what I consider to be the bulletproofing program is we did the Hamilton cam swap we did the bulletproof diesel water pump those things are amazing billet impeller billet housing bigger bearing and a bigger shaft connecting it through so it's they, and they're beautiful too they, they did a really good job on that mm -hmm. and then while we had everything off we said let's get rid of that turbo because everybody knows that the vgt on these cummins engines is a crap turbo those veins like to stick causing the the turbo actuator to heat up and burn out so we went with the fleece cheetah and then while we were on the phone with fleece we said hey we also want some coolant bypasses Again, let's go back to what everybody knows from second and third gen Cummins that have gone three, four 400,000 miles. Now it's time to do a rebuild. We pop the head off. One of the first things we see is heat damage to cylinders five and six. That's because a Cummins doesn't flow coolant through the entire engine efficiently. So Fleece has come out with a product that takes care of that you knock out that two and a quarter inch freeze plug out of the back of the head and you put their bypass kit in and it's it's simple but it's awesome so while we had the cab off these trucks we went ahead and installed that as well and since these trucks had already gone through the weight loss program that filter fuel filter that's mounted on the side of the engine that whole entire housing is no longer needed the only reason why people leave it is the return lines use the housing as a path for fuel to get back to the tank and it joins it from the cp3 and your fuel rail overpressure and also your injector return fleece has a delete bar that still allows for the commingling of the returns in the stock location with the stock lines so we ixnade those fuel filter housings and all of that crap and put in the fleece fuel filter housing delete. Yeah, we'll call it mm -hmm. that. Yeah. 
and uh you know that just another thing is those little touches that you that you do we did find that you have to get another little piece that plugs into the whiff sensor the water and fuel sensor and uh, we got those ordered up and installed and takes care of that water and fuel light that comes on the dash when you delete that housing another really good little product you know that's the details yes most of us can run around with that whiff sensor light on the dash but some of us it bugs the living crap out of us and it was only like 12 bucks or something like that for that mm -hmm. piece so since we did all of that good stuff to it and these trucks have gone through the weight loss program we've we got a hold of fast and fast sent us some platinum series lift tank or lift pump assembly so we were able to drop the tanks and you know go through the process of installing that it's not a sump style i don't like the sump style unless you're running big power you start you know putting 180 horse and or 180 percent injectors and you're running 200 extra horsepower or whatever it is then go to a sump but for everyday use you just want your truck to last longer don't go to a sump especially you know sometimes they're prone to leaking and it's hanging out there in the middle mm -hmm. of the space in the bottom if you're off-road at all you'll probably catch that thing and do some damage so we did the fast and then uh gosh what else did we do to those transmission oh yeah we uh got rid of the thermal bypass valve for the the transmission cooler lines the factory ones are they're terrible they're junk so we got you've done a couple since i've been yeah yeah, yeah. We've, we've done several of them just in the last month i think <sighs> i've done probably six people are tired of that thermal bypass valve taking out their transmission so ixnade yeah. with you and put put in the you know several different companies ats makes them fleece makes them um i can't remember where we got these ones from but we got all these parts you know through the various people but the distributor ended up being diesel power products and it was literally a one-stop shop you know if i say yeah we got a hold of the guys at fast well we called them which one do you think we should put in these trucks here's what we're doing they said we need the platinum series so diesel power products had all of that in stock on the shelves and then um gosh what else did we do to them you already just got the flat tappets yeah the flat the, tap it and then and the, um, they already well, had the monster rams on there oh yeah that's, they had yeah that's right they already had a bunch of stuff already done they had the, the truck. boost tubes true oh that brings up one thing i've had several people comment about after you put the banks boost tubes on that you can't get the oil filter out through the wheel well like you used to be able to yeah you're right you can't if you put them in wrong if you notice that one boot that goes on the turbo has an offset part to it and you put that offset to the top it still allows enough room to pull that that oil filter out through the wheel well nice. so you know banks puts the logo on there for a reason so that you can clock it in in the right direction <laughs> it's not just because they want their name on every part that they make but specifically on those you put the bank's logo up and you can't go wrong yeah well one thing i don't know if you want to talk about in this video i remember the second truck that you did only had ten thousand miles on it yeah oh, gosh we might as well talk about it because you know this is going to be like a series with all of this but the second truck had you know just under ten thousand miles on it and seven out of the 12 push rods were already worn out they already showed extreme signs of wear and this guy there is no way it was from his driving there's no way it was from an oiling issue because this truck literally had one oil change since he had bought and bought the truck <clears throat> it's a it's a terrible supply from whoever's given their crap to cummins to build these it's a manufacturer error and more and more and more of the 19s through 22s that i pull a valve cover on and i'm getting to the point now i do it just to try and sell something because you can have valve cover off in 10 minutes you know pull that off and see those and then now you go to the customer and be like here i gotta show you something yeah <laughs> Here's what I recommend, and here's what we can do. <laughs> 10,000 miles and 
10,000 miles and they're wore out. You know, and these were 23s. That's, I thought they'd gotten yeah, past they that by 23, but apparently 24 just before they went and changed the whole design. But it's by the these roller hydraulic or the the hydraulic lifters with rollers, that whole design, man, we got to bring that back to Cummins because it's terrible. Yeah, go back to the solid flat tappets and you know. So what if they're a tiny bit noisier? It's 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 ridiculous. It's a good noise. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good noise. That's a noise that you want to hear out of your Cummins, but um. <laughs> I mean, so someone's doing hot shot like there's a uh, you can't probably see it from that there. there's a hot shot truck right there right now as we speak but yeah if somebody wants to do hot shot and they want to run that truck a million miles uh -huh. is this something you recommend yeah i recommend that and then some insane diesel has an oil filtration bypass system out you know there's there's a couple companies that have them um, but the, the one from Insane Diesel, I really like because these are Americans coming up with an American idea for an American vehicle. You know, <laughs> it's not like some of these other companies that I won't mention that have put out the product and it's just as good a product, but you know, it's probably manufactured in Bangladesh, who mm -hmm. knows, anywhere besides here. But the guys at Insane Diesel have taken what the other companies have made and made it better. And it's real simple, you know, it's one of those, how come this hasn't been thought of faster? And for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, hop on Insane Diesel's website and take a look at their oil filtration systems. They're amazing. Mm -hmm. And if it fails, your stock filtration is still there to provide you what you need. Yeah. But it does a way better job of it. This is where we're talking about, especially when you've gone through the weight loss program, you've gone through the attitude. Now we're getting rid of the hydraulic roller lifters and you want these engines to last 500,000 miles oil filtration is key to to making sure that your engine has the best chance possible of lasting that long they're filtering down to two micron and they're filtering it at a rate of 150 gallons an hour Oh, wow. I believe is what that filtration, but it's a bypass. So it's taking a little bit of oil from the oil filter housing. It's taking a little bit of that, running it through the system and pumping it right back into the motor. Mm. It's not the motor getting the oil from that to lubricate the rest of the system. Mm -hmm. It's working separately off the side, just going through and doing a really fine filtration on the oil. Okay. And then, and lastly, number one, do you need tuning to go to a flat tap it? And then if somebody wants to get this work done on their truck, yeah. how do they contact you? All right. You do not need tuning to go to a flat tap it, solid lifter, the cam swap. It's the engine computer has no idea that you just swap that out. So for those of you who want to keep all of your emissions control devices, but want to get rid of that hydraulic roller cam, we can do it without changing anything in the tune. Will avoid your warranty? Yeah. That's true. That's, <laughs> good. That's a good way to it. it will avoid your warranty. I, yeah. I get tons of questions, especially with the bank stuff. Will this void your warranty? Well, you need to contact your local dealer. And that means you're going to be married to these people if you start modifying your vehicle yeah. in a way that... Does it delete anything? No. Does it change any of the characteristics of the engine? A little bit. Here if the part that we replace onto your vehicle and get rid of the factory is cause for a problem of course your powertrain is going to go bye-bye if your vehicle has had another catastrophic failure where our engineering department or our tech department has to get involved and they come in and inspect the vehicle probably going to avoid your warranty you know, if you if you're that concerned about your warranty, then wait until you hit your hundred thousand off your powertrain, and then bring it in and let's play. Anytime you put an aftermarket part on your vehicle, I don't care if it's a Chevy, a Ford, a Dodge, a Toyota, you risk the chance of voiding your warranty. So anyway, get back to the question that was asked. 
do you have to tune it to put the, the Hamilton cam in? Not at all. And if you want to get a hold of me to do that, then you know you can either get a hold of me through the dealership or you can email me direct. And then I'm going to get you in touch with my service department so that we can get you scheduled, make sure we have all the parts here or that you've already, you know, got all your, your own parts. I do recommend that if we are pulling the cab to replace the cam and lifters, at minimum, you need to put that fleece coolant bypass in. It's it's a no-brainer. It takes an extra 15 minutes at that point to put that thing in. So if you're going to do the Hamilton cam swap or if we're pulling the cab for anything else, get that fleece coolant bypass kit. Oh, and that was the other thing we put on. We put on the, the catch cans. Oh, on yeah. Those two, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which brought up another comment or 14 where people had said that I was bypassing an emissions control device by putting a catch can in and I for the life of me can't figure how they came to that conclusion because the gases from the crankcase eventually go back into the turbo we just put a catch can in line so that we didn't get oil vapor going right into the turbo that's all we did we put a catch can to recondense that into a liquid and then the vapor the 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 compression gases still go back into the turbo, still go through the, the emissions control devices. That's all we did. So, I don't know how some people look at that and go, You deleted an emissions control device after you said you wouldn't do it! What? Hey, welcome to, welcome to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Welcome to I YouTube, know. buddy. <laughs> you know, and if, if a lot of these other companies were as popular as banks and and so many people were going for them to buy their parts and bring it to me install then you could also probably claim that i was working for them too but everybody wants the bank's products Alrighty, so we you know we, we've covered a few things about what we did on these uh the bulletproof job and if anybody's got any questions of course reach out i'm you're gonna have to email me because it's getting too hard to watch all of these comments and everything so but i do want to thank you all for watching thank for thank you for making this an awesome experience that we've had here doing these youtube videos so far but uh you know hit the comment and the like and the share button and all that stuff and we'll see you on the next one peace